What is up YouTube? Welcome to my little YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to try and demystify a lot of how the PCB system works with a 3800 car. A lot of people really seem to struggle with the way this system works and don't understand how it should work with the turbo system and if you can even make it work with the turbo system. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I'm going to make it work in my car and how you could possibly make it work in your car even if you're running a turbo. So a PCB stands for Positive Crankcase Ventilation. This allows your crankcase to get fresh air while your engine is running so that way you're not constantly having all those fumes inside of the crankcase. It's recircling that moisture out of there, giving it just a constant supply of, of decent air inside of that. Supposedly a properly working PCB system will help prevent blowby because it helps those piston rings to seal properly and it helps remove that crankcase gas and supposedly helps prevent sludge. In my experience though, the PCB system that when it works can help make sure that you're not breathing fumes from the engine if you're just venting all that, that gas to the atmosphere. It makes road trips a lot more pleasant especially if you're running a car that doesn't run on e85 so i'm gonna roll the intro clip and let's just dive into this so if you look at a factory service manual for a 3000 this is what you'll see for the diagram for the PCB system. Now we can break this down into the main components of it and that's kind of what this looks like right here. The most important parts of this system are the supercharger, the PCB valve, the intake manifold, the throttle body, the mass airflow sensor, the crankcase itself, and then also your two PCB pathways. So I added some color coding here to help differentiate where the pressures are at with each of these different parts of the systems under normal operating conditions. So typically your intake manifold behind the throttle body is gonna be operating underneath vacuum pressure under most driving conditions. In front of the throttle body, you're gonna have atmospheric pressure or at least close to it. One of the PCB ports is routed to the suction side or the vacuum side of the throttle body. So that way it, it applies a light vacuum into the crankcase itself and it's metered by the PCV valve itself as well too. The other side is fed fresh air in front of the throttle body that is cleaned by the air filter and also measured by the mass airflow sensor. It's important that the mass airflow sensor sees the amount of airflow traveling through it because that air is being fed back into the intake manifold. Even though it's going through the whole crankcase system, it needs, still needs to account for that amount of air so it knows how much fuel to put into the engine. Without that, you get a vacuum leak. So when you're operating underneath boost, it works pretty much the same way. You still have all that crankcase pressure going into the vacuum side of it because it's still on the vacuum side of the supercharger because you can imagine there's two sides of that supercharger. One has compressed air, one is where it sucks in that compressed air. Another important factor to consider is what's called blow-by. So this is what happens when you have a lot of pressure inside of your cylinders it will leak past the piston rings and into the crankcase itself. This causes extra pressure to be built up inside of the crankcase, which has to be evacuated somehow. But what's cool about the factory system is that it gives it two paths for it to go into because it can go back up the fresh air feed if there's enough pressure down there. So all of that air can be sucked back into the intake and then just eaten up by the engine. This is important because you don't want an extra crankcase pressure being built up because that's gonna cause you to blow up things like your rear main seal, your front seal, your valve cover gaskets, etc. So here you can see on your lower intake manifold, this is where your PCV valves are located. You have two different ports here that go into the crankcase directly. And by the crankcase, we mean where your rotating assembly sits, where all of your oil sits, uh, that whole area is your crankcase, right? So. These will vent through the heads and they will enter the crankcase through the heads themselves. So here's one of the ports itself. So you can see this is where it goes into on the heads and this is just going straight into the crankcase itself. So basically vented straight through here. So that's your crankcase vent. So there's one right here and there's one right here. So there's two of these ports. And uh, as you can see here, these ports go straight into these little teardrop looking things right there. So that's your PCB port system. There's one here. And there's also one here. You can see that uh, no matter which way you rotate the intake manifold to, you can flip this whole thing over and the ports are still in the correct locations. So these PCV ports are sealed on the intake manifold so they don't go into the intake itself yet. They go directly up into the supercharger or your upper intake manifold. So on a supercharged car, you have your one port right here and then your other port right here. So this port over here goes to the PCV valve where it's metered. Uh, it also kind of acts as a check valve, but not really supposedly and then from there it will enter back into the the plenum on this side of the supercharger and then inside of the supercharger you can see that that's where that port enters the intake manifold itself so it's 
in front of the rotor pack. And um, that's where it gets that, that constant vacuum pressure, or at least close to it. So it's always seen vacuum. Your other port right here goes into your throttle body. So it goes into the supercharger, travels up this way somewhere, and it comes out right over here. And from here, it goes into the throttle body, which is this port right here. This throttle body port goes past the butterfly. It's sealed past the butterfly, and it enters your intake system through this little port down there. And uh, being on the other side of the throttle body, it's always underneath you know, constant ambient air pressure, at least close to it. Obviously, it's not perfectly ambient. There's going to be some small amount of vacuum there. But this side of your throttle body blade is where all the vacuum is. You'll also notice that that port down there is on this side of the mass airflow sensor. So any air that goes inside of that port is being metered and measured by the mass airflow sensor. So when you have your, your fresh air inlet coming through here, going through your crankcase, back in your PCB valve and into the intake itself, it's metering that air, it knows where it's going, it knows how much of it's there, and it can compensate for the amount of fuel it needs for it. So that works great with the supercharger, right? But what if you throw away the supercharger and you decide to go turbo instead? Initially, it's a lot like a naturally aspirated car under most operating conditions. Uh, it's routed the same way, but uh, you run into an issue when you start building a boost in this thing. So when you have a turbo car, you can imagine that this whole system is pressurized from here all the way to the intake, into the cylinders, etc. right? Your fresh air intake being in the throttle body now is underneath constant boost pressure when there's pressure inside of the system, which means that your crankcase is being pressurized from that fresh air inlet into the crankcase itself. So here you can see that same diagram now, but with boost pressure being indicated in all of those, those PCB pathways. And uh, with that boost pressure, there's no place for that PCB pressure to go. So it just builds up pressure inside of the crankcase along with all that blow by. And this is how you blow out seals out of the crankcase. So if you convert to a turbo recently and you keep blowing out valve cover gaskets or your dipstick tubes or your rear main seals, that's probably why. So what most people will do when they run a turbo is they will block off all the PCV ports and they will just run valve cover breathers to let all that blow by gas escape through the valve covers. And then that works nicely under boost pressure at least. The downside of this though is that under most driving conditions when you're not under boost, when you have that vacuum inside of the intake manifold, there's not much blow by going through the crankcase. So you're not really venting much air through the system. The risk I see with this is that you build up a lot of moisture inside of the crankcase that's hard to evacuate unless you're really driving the car quite a bit and you're putting miles on it to get that oil up to operating temperature to burn off that moisture. The quick and dirty solution might be to add check valves by the PCB system and also another breather so that way you have that outlet for all that air to go to from that crankcase pressure. This would allow you to keep PCB system working properly under vacuum conditions, not underneath boost. And then also gives you that outlet for all that crankcase pressure to go to. However, the problem is that this creates a boost leak when you're underneath boost conditions. Then you have extra metered air that's flown out of the valve cover and then you have basically a ridge condition. From there you might say, okay, well let's get rid of that pathway behind the mass airflow sensor and then just vent this to atmosphere, right? This allows you to have that crankcase pressure vent source and also allows you to get that fresh air feed for when you're underneath vacuum conditions. But now instead of a boost leak, you've created a vacuum leak now because you have all this air going through the crankcase back to the intake that's not being metered by the mass airflow sensor. So the only way to make this really work then is to move your mass airflow sensor somewhere in front of the turbo. And then this will work pretty well actually. This solves the boost leaks, it solves the vacuum leaks. The only issue with this though now is that instead of running a blow off valve that vents the atmosphere, now you have to run a recirc valve, which really just doesn't sound that cool. The blow off valves sound way better than a recirc valve does. If you ask me the best way and coolest way to make this work is to run a different ECU that lets you run speed density instead of using the mass airflow sensor. So this is what I decided to do in the cutlass. I kept the two different ports that come out of the intake manifold and then I teed off one of those and put a check valve on both ends of that. The other end of that I ran straight into the cone filter on the intake of the turbo so it's fed atmospheric pressure all the time. So under light throttle conditions where there's vacuum in the intake manifold, the PCB will still apply suction in the crankcase so it'll suck out all the fumes out of there and then still have that fresh air feed out of the air filter. Then when your intake manifold is operating underneath boost pressure, that PCB check valve is stopping that pressure from going back inside of the crankcase 
while still allowing that crankcase pressure to be bled off back into the air filter and then sucked back into the turbo. You'll notice there's no mass airflow sensor here, and this is because the car would have to run in speed density, and that's the only way that this system works without getting a vacuum leak or a boost leak. Now, you don't need to feed these lines back into the air filter, but getting those fumes sucked back up into the engine is much better than breathing those fumes. So I know that with my Grand Prix, if I have the crankcase being vented to the atmosphere, you will smell those fumes the whole time you're driving the car. But if you can get those sucked back into the intake manifold, you're going to be breathing a lot cleaner air when you're driving on the freeway. So on my intake, I designed this thing to have these little ports here that grab those lower intake manifold ports and then will basically allow you to take advantage of those and direct them somewhere else, right? So here's one of them right here. This is being fed into my T for the PCV itself. So the PCV valve is sitting right here. And then one of the uh, the ports from this goes into the filter through a one-way check valve over there. And the other one goes into the intake manifold, also through another one-way check valve as well too, which gets that vacuum pressure. Here's the other port right here. You can see that this goes basically a straight shot from here into the air filter. So there's no check valves in that one at all. So that one is your fresh air feed now and also your extra port for your bypass for venting all the extra crankcase pressure. You can see I have all those lines back here. They uh, they do snake through here. It's a bit of a mess, but uh, I think I'll, I'll figure out a way to make it look somewhat presentable or just um, not not worry about it. We just won't look at it. I'll cover it, up, cover it up with cardboard when I go to a car show maybe. Okay, so the final step of making the PCB system work is to drill holes in the air filter for the intake. So that's what I did here. I did two half inch holes and um, inside of these holes, I'm gonna be using these, these bulkhead bungs. So I'll put these things in through the other side so they're face up like this. That way the nut is on the outside of it and then the rest of this one whole piece is on the inside. And this way, when you put your hose on here, it'll clamp down on this thing and there's no chance of that nut going through. If you put it through the opposite direction, if that nut comes loose, it could go into your intake, go to your turbo, destroy everything and cause all kinds of havoc. So just be careful with this. If you're doing this, just don't get any trash in here. Just keep it all clean. Don't put anything inside of here that you're not sure is gonna stay put and not go into the intake. So I'll go ahead and shove these things through here. Try to keep the old k logo looking good. So these will go in here like so. So they'll just kind of it'll pop out the bottom of this thing and kit. That's kind of how that one came out. Now they're gonna be a little loose, it's, it is rubber. You can get metal filters too, but they're more expensive. I just don't think it's necessary. What I did in the Grand Prix was I actually glued these things in too, but I don't think I'd, I need to do that. All right, so that's how that ended up looking. I think the key with this is making sure these nuts don't actually, these nut heads, these hex nuts, don't actually pierce themselves through the rubber because if you tighten them down enough, they'll probably do that because it's rubber, it's flexible, but. Uh, that's about kind of where I'll leave it. You know, I don't anticipate the nuts coming off, but if they do, when you put your hose on here and your hose barb and your hose clamp, if you clamp your hose down to this properly, that hose will keep this thing from going back into the turbo. So even if that nut does come loose, the, the hose will keep it there. You'll see if the nut's loose at some point when you look at this thing occasionally. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this thing in the car for hopefully the last time. So the PCB system in this car is basically done. I think that that's the best way to do it. I'm doing that in this car. I'm gonna do the same thing in my Grand Prix here too as well. And that should keep everything happy, all the fumes out of the car and not have to smell that, that awful smell you get of unburnt or raw gas in the car. So that's gonna do it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.